good evening, hunters. The Nightmare Hunter with Roger Noriega and D.A. Roberts is live on May 4th, 2021. Thank may you. the 4th be with you. Indeed. May the 4th be with you. Folks. Uh, or you could t- celebrate the whole month and just say, this is the May. I heard that one. This is the May. Yes. Very good. want to welcome everyone who's joining us both live and in the archive. Of course, that means. And oh, wow. Our numbers just jumped right away. So, Thanks. folks. Thank Please. you for joining us. Uh, Twitch is live. I just got that notice. So thank you, folks. Everyone is on the Nightmare Hunter channel. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Please give us a like. Let us know who you are and where you hail from. I understand that this is not going to make up for next Monday. But I am at a crossroads because May 17th is tax deadline. Oh, we are scheduled. We already have a guest. We're going to have to play it by ear as to what's going to happen. But we ask you to bear with us. And sure enough, there it is. Good evening, Jacob Hayes. Thank Good you evening. for the like. Thank we you, sir. We salute you, Jacob. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Hunter. I didn't bring anything to drink. Uh, you're all good. It was last minute. If you need uh, to send a request to the significant other, maybe she'll make you a cup of coffee. Or no, maybe probably not. She's on crutches. Oh, so what happened? She twisted her knee. Wow, dude. What did you do to cause her <laughs> well, to take a swipe at you <laughs> and for her to miss? First of all, I the want to long, I'm sure. ninja skills because when a woman takes that shot and misses, Asusan, <laughs> you've done well. And I don't know what that means, but I have that on Sports Talk with the guys, so go figure. Now she was just stepping down off the front steps and stepped down wrong and rolled her ankle and wrenched her knee and she'll be all right. She's just got to recover a little bit. Okay, so that's the story you're going with, right? Okay, <laughs> that's dear. the story, and I'm sticking to it. I want to welcome everyone who's watching us. We do have a varied audience over on Twitch and DB Media. We have the Nightmare Hunter. We have uh, watching on DA Roberts, and we have the NDB Media Facebook page. We have numerous people watching us. We thank you. We are on the Ozarks Haunted Paths. We are on the DA Roberts page. Of course, Roger D. Noriega. Uh, and numerous NDB Media YouTube and Facebook channels. And as I mentioned, uh, we're, we're on Twitch. So, folks, this might be a little bit of a last minute, but it's something that we want to do for a while. It's not that we're running behind. It's just that there's so much in just giving you an overview of of cryptids around the world. And I know we're going to be off tangent quite a bit, or I'm sorry, we're going to be on tangents, but today we were thinking of taking a look at Central Asia, a place that you probably would not think of there being cryptids, but lo and behold, like we learned of Africa, there are many in Central Asia as well. DA, I'm looking at the area, which is kind of like the Southern parts of Russia, Mm-hmm. All of the stands, kind of like north of India, west of China, and stuff like that. What is your impression of that area that uh, I'm kind of talking about right now? I've never been there. Uh, I, I understand it's very arid and rugged. Uh, so any any mm-hmm. cryptid from that area is going to be very hardy. That's uh, the area where the Kandahar giant story came from and things like that. Which I believe we have not given that one the time of day yet on this program. Uh, we discussed it a little bit on DA or DAX Machina, but we haven't touched it on Nightmare Hunter yet. I'm sorry for being pedantic and repetitious. So. <laughs> I'm being stupid right here. But there are quite a few, and I know we are going to get to a bit of it. We want to give a shout out to uh, cryptids.fandom.com. We respect the website, and we want to give you a shout-out that at least I myself do reference your website, and I want to uh, let everyone know that we are looking on this page now. And, yes, we did get another like, so we want to give the love out there. But if you want to follow along with some of the stuff that we're talking about, I just posted the link, and, oh, my goodness, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different ones. So uh, they're all over there. You can check them out. There's quite a bit of stuff. But cryptids, 
uh, at fa- or cryptids.fandom.com. Really, really good stuff. And that is but one website where we, uh, you know, spend some time with. But good evening, Commodore. Thank you, Commodore. What's the website? As a matter of fact, I just check on you on the Facebook feed of the episode. I just oh, there it is. Okay, hi, Commodore. Thank you for joining us, Commodore. So you you can check it out, and uh, we're going to be <laughs> right in front of me. Yes, it does happen. I'm going to put you on blast just because I can. <laughs> so, uh, really good stuff. And there are others that we're going to be referencing as well, but that's just one of the items. Cryptids.fandom.com is in, an incredibly detailed website. So, we want to give them play. So, anyway, DA, uh, reading directly from their website. This mountain region is the depository of ancient Mediterranean, Eastern Mediterranean, and the Younger Mountains of Central Asia. Found in the Gisaro Alai are a number of endemic Central Asian montane species that are often that often are localized to specific mountain ranges. Characteristic vegetation types include coniferous, evergreen, woodland, and juniper. That surprises me. I get the impression that juniper would be somewhere kind of like where we are in our neck of the woods, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Probably a but, different species of the same plant. Yes, it is a juniperus species, ephemeroid herb vegetation, as well as unique fruit and relic nut forests. So there's a unique fauna and stuff out there. And oh my goodness, here we go, folks. The the likes have just shot up. We are nice. generally thankful. Um, I'm going to start writing these down right now, so I ask you to bear with us. Uh, DA, if you want to go in a comment on some of the comments, I apologize. I'm unprepared because, of course, at 844, I send DA a message. Dude, I'm awake. You want to go? And DA's like, hijos, there's so many. <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? Why not? <laughs> uh, Carlos found the uh, the link. Josh says, woot. Josh Jones says, woot. Uh, low key KLKR it says we are live on the air at 99.9 in Lake Isabella. And I want to thank you all for listening to us in the, in the, uh, the Valley region there. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy the show. Thank you guys for tuning in. And then Josh Jones says, what's up fam. How you doing, Josh and Carlos Vallon. There's a quote from Homer Simpson about this matter. It's a plant. What's it going to do? Eat me. And then he gets eaten by a plant. <laughs> <laughs> Feed uh, me, Seymour. He, oh, very good. Yes. Uh, I do want to go ahead as I write everyone's name. Jacob Hayes, Carlos Valen, and uh, Josh Jones, and Loki, KLKR, I believe it's 99.9, Lake Isabella. That is absolutely awesome. I believe we're also in the simulcast there as well. So thank you. Outstanding. One and all. Thank you, guys. Uh, go ahead and uh, check it out. As I mentioned earlier, we do have a link for some of the items. Uh, it's interesting that in this area, it looks like there's a variety of Bigfoot populations. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how we would classify that, DA, but reading directly from our friends over there, I know mm-hmm. they're like, well, who the hell are you guys? <laughs> no, no, we're all friends. We're giving a play. But... Uh, it's a, it's home to a variety of Bigfoot populism, such as Dev, Zute, Farishta, Harum, Mo, Jungli, Admi, and Matai Kagmi. Wow. The Abnaayayu, I know you know that one, DA, right? Mm. The Abnaayayu is the Russian analog of Bigfoot Sasquatch. Yeah. Except Except there's several in Russia. Do you know how to pronounce that one? Because I unfortunately do not. No, I do not. I'm afraid that my uh, my Russian is not good. Mastrovia. Yeah, but it's all good. Um, The uh, it is said to roam the lands around the the Caucasus mountain range, which, for those of you that know and don't know, the Caucasus are in southwest Russia, which, if I'm not mistaken, it's north of Turkey, Iran, 
and it's in you know the Caspian Sea is right around there, the Black Sea is over to the west and stuff like that. But there's like a other, there's a novel uh, that's set in that area, uh, Tajikistan, I believe it's where it's set. Uh, the book is called Neanderthal, and it's uh, by John Darton, D A R N T O N. And I read that a number of years ago, and it was a really, really interesting take on the Bigfoot legend. And he went with the hypothesis that they were a relic population of Neanderthal. And it, it's a really incredible book. Um, and it's it's very interesting. It's, it's a very, very different take. Uh, but although there are a lot of people that have encountered Bigfoot-type creatures that have claimed they heard a voice in their head telling them to leave or threatening them or, you know, saying, if you don't, if you put that down, you know, like within the case of a gun. Um, so it, the, this book, while a work of fiction could prove plausible, but it is a very good book. If you get a chance to read it, I read it and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I've not seen that one. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, put the link in the chat room. I've got it up on Amazon as we speak. Uh, like I said, I read the book probably 10 years ago and I still have it somewhere. I'd like to read it again, but it is a, it's a really well written, well thought out book. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. DA, I ask you to bear with me. I am receiving an important call from my daughter. Would you forgive me? Sure. I'll take care of. Well, I guess Roger will be right back. Um, well, I guess I'll talk a little bit about that book. Um, it it delves into a, an aspect of, of of Bigfoot research that's um, very different. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of researchers don't attribute much credence to reports where that what they re, what was sometimes referred to as the woo. Uh, well, I don't know who assigned that name, but it means anything that happens that's outside the normal realm of science. Uh, most researchers are firm firm in the camp that it's it's a type of ape or a relic population of hominid. Um, but there are others, there are other researchers that believe they're, they have the ability to cloak themselves or they might have the ability to shift, uh, shift through other dimensions. And then there are people that think they can do what they call mind speak. Um, and that I'm not, uh, not real sure about, uh, sure about. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, none of us know because we've never actually actually brought one in to study. Uh, but it is a very good book if you get a, get a chance to check it out. And then Carlos says, sounds like a great book. And he also says, do you have any suggestions on cryptids in the Scandinavian area? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, a lot of Scandinavian lore uh, seems to coincide with the Bigfoot legend, but they, for some reason, they refer to them as trolls. Uh, if you look up Scandinavian trolls, you will find pictures of Bigfoot type creatures. Uh, they're considered to be large, hairy hominids that live in the woods and will often abduct people. Uh, it can be, you know, and some of the behaviors as associated with the trolls are very much behaviors that have been observed in Bigfoot type creatures. In fact, there is a, a large school of thought uh, that says that the epic poem Beowulf, where it talks about fighting the, fighting the, the, the creature, uh, uh, Grendel, that Grendel possibly could have been a member of a tribe of Bigfoot, uh, which very well could be a relic population of Neanderthal. Um, if you look at the book by, by Danny, uh, Danny Vandramini, uh, the book is called Them and Us, and he reexamines from a forensic point of view um, the skeletons that were have been unearthed of, of Neanderthal. And when they were when Neanderthal was first found, the museums that pieced them back together made them look nearly human. You know, they had them on wearing clothes and using clubs and things like that. But Danny Vendermini took a more more scientific approach than just wanting them to look humanoid. Um, and it, you've heard of those those uh those fields where they can they can take a skull and use modeling clay and by, by the impressions on the bones where the muscles would lay they can reconstruct what the face would look like well Danny Vendramini did that and what he came out with was something out of a nightmare and it they look more like the modern sasquatch than they do a human and they were big and powerful and, and he postulates that they the reasons we reason we have this genetic predisposition to be afraid of them is because at one point they ate us Uh, very quickly, DA has made a note, uh, or not made a note, and I apologize. I'm, I'm all over the place. But DA commented early on when we began these programs 
that the reason why we are what we are and the reason why we fear what we fear, because at one time, we were not the apex predators. The there were schools of thought says we still there. aren't. Very good. Very good. He may have stolen a tiny bit of my thunder <laughs> where I was going with, but Sorry, we're TV. not at all. I think this is funny. I am able to tell you when that happens. I was going to loop it around very quickly, but it's it's we are the apex predators now because several thousand years ago we were not. And this is before we were the nomadic hunter gatherers. This is before when we were actually hunted. And it's funny how people talk about how things change, but they always remain the same. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where I was going to go to right now with DA. DA, it rumored that we're the apex predator. Jeez. An, an apex, there are many apex predators throughout the animal kingdom. Um, a shark in its natural environment is an apex predator. An alligator in its natural environment is an apex predator. Uh, timber wolves, when they move into an area and, and, and bring in a pack, they are the apex predator in that area. Uh, man is an apex predator in so far as we are in our element. Uh, if you take guys like um, Les Stroud that does the Survivor Man series, and he goes way deep into the woods. Oh, yeah. Guess what? He's not the apex predator anymore because he's got bears to continue contend with and mountain lions. And these are creatures that have and, you know, that can and have eaten human on many occasions. Um, in Denali National Park, um, it's the only place you will see a park ranger carrying a, 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 a like 44 Magnum hand cannon instead of just the little Glocks like they carry down here. If you go to any national park in the lower 48, they're probably carrying a Glock like any other cop. But up in Denali, they've got that massive 44 Magnum hand cannon because they've got to stop, you know, 12, 13 foot bears because grizzly bears get big and they have been known to take down and eat hikers. Um, if, if the game is scarce and the bear is hungry, we are not a match for a bear. We're just not. Uh, so in, in our element, we are apex predators. And there are certain guys with the skill set to go out and hunt um, special forces people or people that have trained their entire, entire lives to be hunters can go out and still be an apex predator in that more dangerous environment. But most people, I'd say probably 98% of people, once you get them away from the civilized setting, we cease being the apex predator we think we are. A quick note when you talked about the shark, the great white shark being the apex predator. I read something with the last day or two that stated that with these cameras, with these, oh, I can't believe, I can't, you know, these uh, flying little things, I forget what they are called now. Drones? Uh, the drones. That when they go out just off the coast, they are now picking up images of great white sharks much closer than mm -hmm. we ever thought before. Uh, people who are uh, out there surfing had no idea, and they still don't have any idea how close these apex predators have been, are, and will continue to be next to them. And we're just talking about the great white shark. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, DA. Well, uh, along the River Nile, the Nile crocodile, they don't have an accurate number of how many people those things kill every year because they don't have an accurate census of the people that live along the Nile Delta. And these people in these villages are still living in essentially late Stone Age technology. They're still living in, in huts. They'll go down to the river to wash their clothes, to get water, to do whatever they're bathing, whatever they need. And those Nile crocodiles will pick them off. Uh, a lot of those villages I've seen, like a National Geographic, some of them are missing arms uh, because these crocodiles are picking them off. Uh, crocodiles don't fear us, and rightly so, especially if it's a 20 foot, 20 foot alligator or a 20 foot crocodile. As a matter of fact, I want to continue. Uh, Tyler Marshall, thank mm -hmm. you for the like. Thank we you, have Tyler. additional likes, and we have Todd Hunter, also a comment in the chat room. Thank you, Todd. And then we have Cindy. Is it John Pierre? John Pierre. Yes. So, folks, we're up to eight. I want to let everyone know that at 30 likes, however they're happy, love, whatever, at 30 likes, 
we will be handing out a five dollar Amazon card today. So you know we've done it at twenty five. Well, we already hit twenty five, so we want to do it at thirty now, folks. So if you can help us out, and uh, Josh Jones, as you see the comment there, he directed me to some number generators. So we'll see. Maybe we'll get a guest on, have them choose a number, and mm -hmm. uh, we'll see how we'll do it. Well, Josh but says, you. what's something that used to be alive but is now rumored to be alive? Con would something that, yeah, would something that's rumored that used to be alive but is now rumored to be alive constitute a cryptid, for example, a megalodon or a pliosaur? Yes, it would. Uh, there have been a number of, um, of creatures that were believed to be extinct, but people were still seeing them. And people of the you know modern science was like, oh no 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 no, those couldn't be exist. Couldn't exist. They're they were extinct. Fossil record says they died out you know hundred thousand years ago. And in the case of the coelacanth, uh, the people of Madagascar had been eating them for a long time. Uh, it's just it was a prehistoric fish. They thought out thought died out during about during the age of dinosaurs. It was a cryptid. The thylacine, also known as the the uh, Tasmanian tiger. Uh, was thought to be extinct, and they are now finding that there are were relic populations of them in the deep woods, and they're starting to make a comeback. People are seeing them more and more common, um, and I think we're going to run into that with other animals as well. And uh, uh, there are there are a lot, there's a large camp of scientists that think that we're going to run into it with the megalodon, since we don't know that much about the depths of our own oceans. Uh, we don't. We know more. Uh, oh. Sergio, oh, um, Carlos, uh, what do you mean M.23? Is he talking about the gun size? I know he's a shooter. That's why I'm just curious. Sergio at 99.9. .9, how about leprechauns? Uh, we mm. kind of, yeah. <sighs> That's more folklore than cryptid. Um, that falls in with uh, uh, the Tuatha Du Danann, uh, the, the, um, Hey, the, watch the, your language. The the Celtic belief in fairies and fairy magic. That's they're more tied in with that. Uh, but in the greatest sense of crypt of the word cryptid, yeah, uh, it could be considered one. Uh, but it's not really an animal. It's 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 an intelligent person. Uh, but it's it's a member of the Fae. Um, Josh says a new spider was discovered in Florida. Anything can be out there. Scientists are discovering new species that we didn't know exist every day. Now. 95% of the time, they're, it's a form, some form of insect, or they'll find a new bird or, or a, a new butterfly or something along those lines. But Roger and I already did a show on the billy ape. Once in a while, they find oh, yeah. something big. And the billy ape is a perfect example of native, the native lore saying this creature's out there and modern science going, oh, no, 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 it couldn't possibly exist. It's just native mumbo jumbo. There's no giant killer chimpanzees out there. Sure enough, the billy apes out there, it's bigger than a chimpanzee. And the locals called them lion hunters because they would gather together in groups and freaking take out lions. They're very aggressive. They're much bigger than a regular chimp. And you can Google all this. It's called the billy ape, B-I-L-I. And they are very aggressive and very strong. Uh, they're about halfway between the size of, a ch of an eastern chimpanzee and a mountain gorilla. And most of the time, they walk on two legs. As a matter of fact, this is a certain troop of billy apes, mm -hmm. which we did see. And uh, I showed this image just a moment ago. Folks, that's not the stuff of legend. That's the stuff of nightmares. Well, that was the same thing that with the mountain gorilla. Uh, locals in the Congo were telling, in the in the in the Virunga region, in the in the in the jungles of, of uh, Africa, were telling these colonial explorers that were coming through there. Oh, there are giant apes that live out here, and they were like, "Oh no, no, those couldn't be." And they'd go back and tell these native stories, and the guys at the museums were like, "Oh no, no, there's no such thing as a gorilla." And then somebody shot one and dragged it in like, oh, oh, there it is. Yes, that's a new species. What is that, DA? Just wait till they find Cthulhu. Uh, oh, Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Yeah. Okay. H.P. Lovecraft Legends. Let's hope they don't. DA, it will not be a good day for anybody. No. Can we go back to the thing that you were talking about over in, I believe you said Denali, on the program Alaska State Troopers. Mm -hmm. And forgive me, folks, it's a reality program, but... It is a, a sin, for lack of a better word, for me, because I do watch that program, only because of where they go and what they do. 
Mm -hmm. I've never been to Alaska. And if you think of it in its purest form, I'm giving them play. What you see on Alaska State Troopers is amazing. But the troopers that are the park rangers, they carry heavy weapons. And I don't know if you remember exactly what they are, but then they also have what we would call a shotgun, something like that. And yes, Sergio, thank you. We'll get to that one right now. But uh, DA, what do they carry? What do you figure they carry based on what you've seen on that program? I would estimate that the the pistols are at least in the forty four magnum, or maybe the uh, the new uh, Winchester four sixty magnum. Okay, but uh, they also have like a rifle. Yeah, it's probably an uh, it's an AR variant. I'm guessing it's a much heavier caliber. Probably at the minimum an AR ten, which is in, which is a seven six two. Um, but if it were me, I'd I'd probably carry something like the four fifty eight SOCOM, something that's going to knock a bear that'll drop a bear down. And it won't take that many shots. Okay, folks, this is now real. This is not um, just whatever. Yeah, 458 this SOCOM is, is what the Wild Hunt carries. I would carry something like that. Yes. Now, DA, if you would like, uh, go go ahead. Uh, check that read? out with Sergio posted. Yes. Uh, Sergio says, I have a story about my sister-in-law and a small green human-like creature no more than five inches tall. My wife saw one jump in and swim in a small cattle, po- well, cattle water pool and leave clothing on the side. No joke, I heard it many times, but hates to tell the story. My sister-in-law saw it walking to her while sitting in the restroom, and she got scared and ran out. There are a lot of lore on little creatures, uh, from pixies to sprites, uh, and that's just that's, a, that's the European legends. But the Native Americans talked of these little creatures that were like very gnome-like. They called puckwudgies, and they, they can be found throughout throughout a lot of East Coast Native American tribes, but I've heard of them as far west as Oklahoma and even farther south. Um, they're, they're, they're very small, and they, they, they're, they have a tendency to lure people deeper into the woods. Like they'll motion for them to follow them, or they'll make calls, and it sounds like, sound like an animal in distress, but they will lure people away and into 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 areas where they're where they're, they're cut off, and then the person's never seen again. And that's the way the Native American uh, legends go. Uh, but throughout European legends, there's like I said, there's the sprites, the pixies, the dryads, which were attached to trees. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the dryads were atta- uh, were attached to, I believe, water. Uh, I have to look. That. No, I, I've got my my my. I don't I don't really delve a lot into the the. Um, the, the fairy folk, uh, that kind of thing, uh, but it, it's it's just something I've I've read over. I'm more in, into cryptids, but there's there's there are small human like spirits that are attached to trees. There are some that are associated with water, uh, but the puckwudgies are really malicious little 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 monsters that will lower people out into into the woods and kill them. Uh, I was going to tell you, Sergio. Forgive me. You'll probably not talk to me again over this, but your wife, if she were to ever be on this program, our ratings would quadruple. <laughs> For those can see the picture, Sergio, young man, congratulations. His wife is drop dead gorgeous. <laughs> so for her to be on the program, uh, yes, we would be over now. Have her do all the promo posters. <laughs> hey, uh, she is a photographer as well. Uh, she She's just like everyone else. She's a professional work a day Joe or Joanne, but she also does photography and some of her images is just absolutely phenomenal. Maybe awesome. if I Sergio, if you would ask, all kidding aside, maybe I know that um, she might be shy in doing this, but maybe we could record the interview and then play it later. But yes, it was in Mexico, I believe, where that happened. But remember, uh, Sir, sorry, Sergio, I'm embarrassing you, but. Uh, Sergio, uh, he also told us of the story of what was at the top of his of the hill. Remember that? <laughs> no chance. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe there'll have to be a bride there. Who knows? But I know she's shy on that because she's never been on any of the programs. Never been on the radio. Never. I mean, we've been doing this for 13 years. So I get it. But she has a story, and maybe she'll – I'll try to rec- – whoa, 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 no, 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 no. We don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. He says I'll try to record secretly. <laughs> no. 
we would love for her to be on. But I say unabashedly, if she were to be on the program, our ratings would just skyrocket. So, sorry, Sergio, I'm being selfish. I uh, have a a um, person who is uh, wanting to come on the the Nightmare Hunter. Um, since we already have a guest for next week, I uh, have to talk to you about about booking her for the show uh, following uh, a following episode. But she said Monday nights work best for her. Um, but she's got some some ghost. Uh, story she wants to tell us about. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. And DA, I'm contemplating, and actually, I don't know. Okay, DA, who is our guest for next uh, Monday? MK Davis. There uh, it is. For, th- for those of you that are that are familiar with uh, the 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 Bigfoot blood, uh, Bigfoot aspect of cryptozoology, MK Navi- MK Davis's name is a big name in, in Bigfoot, the Bigfoot field research. He has probably studied the Patterson Gimlin footage more than anybody out there. Uh, he's been, if you go on um, Amazon Prime or, or Hulu and look up uh, Bigfoot documentaries, MK Davis, you will find tons of documentaries that he's done. Um, he's done a lifetime of field research. Uh, the man has been there, done that. In the Bigfoot community, he's he's a big deal. Um but he's going to be joining us and he's going to come on and talk about his work and his experiences. And it's going to be a great night. I mean, I've, I'm pretty excited to have MK Davis on. It's a, it's a big deal. Uh, hell yeah. So am I, this genuinely is a big deal. And I'm going to have to update the program for this Monday to add that title on there. It is my fault that I did not add that, but I apologize. MK Davis. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to return to something that we mentioned earlier, folks. On Survivor Man, is that Les Stroud? Les Stroud, correct. That's he also does Survivor Man Bigfoot, uh, and he's captured some really, really good footage. Okay, but he actually started Bigfoot because of what happened on several of his Survivor he Man had, episodes. He had some very... Uh, the hair is standing on the back of my neck, man. Yeah, he had some very aggressive encounters. Uh, he said he's never actually got come face 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 to face with one, but he's had rocks and trees and all kinds of crap thrown out of him. Uh, things circled his camp all night, grunted and screamed at him. He, he yeah, he's a, he's he says I, I want to believe that it's not real, but all the evidence says it is. And I know everybody says there's no body, there's no there's no evidence, but yes, there is evidence. Um, Doctor Jeff Meldrum, who is a is a primatologist. And, uh, and he studies uh, and primate footprints specifically, uh, took a number of the castings done from Bigfoot footprints and looked at them and found that in a lot of the castings where the, where the round conditions were really good, he could find dermal ridges in the casts. And if you're not familiar with that, it's dermal ridges are the same thing on your fingertips and your toes that give you fingerprints. It's the skin patterns. And he said they were definitely primate dermal ridge patterns. And the only way somebody could have faked that is if they had a PhD in anatomy of uh, in primate anatomy. Uh, he said the morphology of the foot, uh, what is called the mid tarsal break, uh, which is the flexor of the way the the uh, the foot moves. Let me see if I've got a picture of the mid tarsal. I know I had one up at one point. Oh, I'm gonna have to go over to DA. But I know I've got the mid tarsal somewhere. It uh, it's just one of those. It's a weird th- morphology about their feet. Um, oh crap! I think I deleted the picture. I'll go back to Nightmare Hunter. But the mid tarsal break essentially is a human foot when it hits the uh, ground. We have the arch on the foot, um, but a primate's doesn't do that. And a, a, a large primate like Bigfoot to support that kind of weight, the, the foot has a hinge in the middle, which is called the mid tarsal break. It's in the, in the middle of the foot. And it, that allows the back half of the foot to flex independently of the front half of the foot. And that's why we get stuff like this. Um, I don't know about you, but if you and I'll ever... have it in about a minute, sorry. Okay, today. no problem. If you look at the way this thing's walking, it brings its foot completely up. We as humans, we don't do this. Uh, we are we are so used to walking on even flat surfaces that it would be very very unnatural for us to to uh, 
to walk like this, to bring your foot completely up like that. Um, that's, that's a, that's a, a bit of motion. We couldn't even follow the gorilla does it. And that's the Patterson Gimlin footage of Sasquatch, uh, from the, I think it was taken in what, 1967. But if you look, the gorilla and the, the Sasquatch walk very similarly. That is not typical human gait. It doesn't, we don't move that way. We're not wired that way. Okay. Josh sent it to me too. So I'm going to, Throw that one up, but yeah, put yours up too. And uh, yeah, that's a good example of the mid tarsal break. Right there in the middle, you see where a human arch would be. It, the, you see that the, the separation is complete because that is the way the foot flexes when it walks. Um, here's another example of it. You can see how the human has human foot in the uh, on the right has the arch to it, and as we lift, we lift on the toes. But the, the Bigfoot foot, the anatomy of, of the way the foot flexes, it flexes closer to the, to the actual ankle than ours does. Ours flexes out by the toes. Their flex, their flex is about halfway back. And that's all to allow to support a much, much heavier animal. And Dr. Jeff Meldrum is the one that's come up with this. And this is a guy, this guy's got a PhD. He's not an idiot. Um, to, you know, he is a brilliant, brilliant guy, and he staked his reputation on the fact that he believes these creatures exist. There are a number of primatologists, in case, including Dr. Jane Goodall, who's famous for studying studying male gorillas and chimps. Uh, even she said the the likelihood of a of a North American primate in in, in the amount of dense forest we have is, is very, very high. Uh, she's she's been shown the evidence that people have collected and believes it. Uh, DNA has been taken. And a lab, a lab tests have come back, and it uh, in some cases it came back unknown, uh, which means it's not doesn't match anything in the database. You, you can fake, you can't fake an unknown DNA source. I mean, what, what would you what would you get it from? Um, there's been hair samples, there's been scat samples, and there have been literally hundreds of, and admittedly ninety nine point nine 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 percent of them are impossible to see much detail because. If you're walking through the woods and you've got if you've got a camera with you at all or other than your cell phone and something is paralleling you in your wo in the woods, I don't think your first priority is probably going to be holding that camera steady to get a good shot. Uh, Roger was stationary in a car uh, when he had his p p a possible sighting, and, and I believe there's something there. Roger's sighting was stable in a car, and it's still hard to make out. What that what that was because there's still movement from the cars going by, and it, when you get a vehicle passing right by your vehicle, it'll shake your car. So there's some shaking to the camera, but it's not because Roger wasn't holding it still. It's because the car was moving from the wind, but it's far enough away you can only see just bits of the movement. And with the but with a, I think you've know you've probably all seen this with a cell phone. You can be looking at something across your yard, your yard, and with the naked eye, see perfect detail. Film it with your your cell phone camera, and it comes out looking like like a tiny little speck, and it's hard to see anything. Oh yeah, uh, and I've had that happen to me many times. Um, uh, lot, there's so much footage out there, and some of it's taken by very very credible people. Uh, you know, I'm sure we can rule out some of them as being hoaxers or people just misidentified something. But even if one is real, the creature exists. Yes. And I want to give another shout out uh, to Thomas Whitney. Thank you, Thomas, for that. And uh, folks, I want to give uh, some acknowledgement and love. You saw my youngest. Uh, she did call me. She was finishing up her shift. And she tells me she's at King Taco. So for everyone and anyone who's in Southern California, sorry, kids. Yeah, I pretty much, I drove by King Taco and I saw no line and I gunned it to get in there. And so I called you the first time, but I think I was still hooked up to the phone. So it, the line went dead. And so that's what I'm like, I was like, hurry up, back to the damn phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. And I guess I missed it. That's why when my daughter called me, I'm worried, number one, because I know she's leaving work. And if she's calling me, Number one, she's saying she's coming home or I don't know. So that's why I said, DA, forgive me. I have to take the call. But I don't know. For those of you, if you noticed when I returned, I had a massive smile on my face because I knew what was on its way. So I'm sorry. I want to give a shout out to my daughter and uh, she might join us in a little bit. But Awesome. Uh, it's really I, good um, stuff. I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma earlier today. And we were heading for the highway to get back on, on the highway to come home and rounded a corner. And guess what I saw? Yeah. Uh, Carl's Jr. 
I thought they were all Hardys in our area. I'm like, oh my God, it's a Carl's Jr. What the hell? So you have a Carl's Jr. in Oklahoma, yeah. but not in Missouri. Not in Missouri. They're they're Hardys here. Okay. So a uh, DA, is it safe to say what we're thinking of doing, or should we still keep it quiet for July of 2022? Go for it. El well, young man. El jefe. Oh, el jefe of a committee. <laughs> yeah. That's how you put people to work. I don't know how it happened, but it obviously does play to my ego. So, uh, my fragile ego. But I have been chosen, given the responsibility, the incredible responsibility, that uh, we're going to be putting on a big party in July of 2022 over in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, We don't know the full details yet. The committee is being formed now. If you're interested in volunteering, contact DA Roberts or myself or any one of the other committee members. We have five or six people on the committee now. And I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to need subcommittees and stuff. But first thing, I believe we're going to be meeting early soon in May. (laughs) And we're going to start planning it out. But DA... We're looking to have a convention, a cryptid convention, a horror convention, but it is going to be a DA-verse convention. So, folks, we are open to any ideas, acknowledgments, assistance. Uh, I've always wanted to do a convention, and I said it just like, geez, a convention would be great. I've always wanted to do a convention. Yeah, they slap me. They're like, hey, you're doing it. So I know I'm going to be heading out there this summer to do some work, but we're looking to do it sometime in July. There is some play. And why are we choosing July tentatively? DA, please tell us. Uh, Because July of 2022 will mark the 10-year anniversary of the release of the first Ragnarok book. Wow. Now... That's a big deal, folks. Ten years. And Josh, yes, you are so right. Uh, I just haven't, I have not gotten the video over to you. Now, the funny thing is, I want to compare, oh yeah, no no line, line, no line at King Taco. That is crazy. Fortune favors the hungry, yes. Now, what is interesting is when DA saw the video, he didn't see anything. I'm talking about his video. I didn't see, oh, but everyone else saw something. And in my video, I didn't see anything. I don't see anything. But apparently other people have seen something, and that's crazy. That is crazy. Wow. Talk about getting some early late at night. Thank you, Josh. Asusan is most happy. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying that. Roger, would you like to watch? Would you uh, mind me showing your video again? Uh, not at all. Right. Let me uh, let me move that uh, comment. Okay, folks, we're gonna watch Rogers uh, Rogers video again. Uh, Roger, would you set this up? Tell us what time of the day, where it was at, and everything. Um, okay, gonna give us a, an image. There's two videos. Actually, there are a lot of pictures I took on my way down from Big Bear. I was out visiting friends, and it was Sunday. It was in the early morning on Sunday on my way home. Highway 38, for those of you that know, that's on the back way. And I, the geologist in me took some images of a wall formation. You know, it was, a, it was the, the embankment just opened up. I heard something in the first video. It was frightening. I didn't like it. I got back in the car. What did it sound I like? Started, it, I, the best thing I can compare it to is a mewling sound. It was strange. It was like a... A humming almost, but it, it was loud, and it was down the hill. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, cut it out. I'm old. I th- You know, my mind's playing tricks on me. So fine. I'm driving further, and I believe the second video is about, and you have to understand that these mountain roads, you know, you're, you're going down, but there are points where you're going back up and down and whatever. So anyway, um, I heard it again. Now, here's the thing, folks. The first time I heard it was outside of the car. The second time I heard it was while I was in the car doing about 30, 35 miles an hour. Air, AC or heater on, radio on, and I heard it again. And I stopped. And I, I could tell, or at least what I felt, was the direction it was coming from. My eye picked up movement. 
More likes. I didn't see it, folks. But I did pick up movement. I was scared. I told DA about it. And uh, DA says, no, dude, we're going with it. I'm like, I didn't see anything. <laughs> but there it is. And, yes, we did get another like. I do want to thank Pam Roberts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll put that down. We're up to 10. If we get 20 more, folks, we'll give a $5 Amazon card out. So, DA, I think I set it up. You have to understand, folks, I was unnerved because I heard, I don't know if it was the exact same thing, but I recognized it and I stopped. And I said, oh, my God, am I going to get video? That was my thinking. Am I actually going to get video? DA, what, would you please play the video? What he's filming in the almost dead center of the screen is a tree. To the left of that tree is another tree, and it's behind the bush. You can kind of see the movement. And then to the right of that tree, it looks like there's at least one more uh, near near the, near the tree to the, to the right of the middle. Uh, but it, if you look, I've got to get the video to Josh so he can do some enhancing. Oh, but and you, before, oh. Um, I apologize. Thank you, DA. I'm at, I can pinpoint where it was on the map because uh, through the Apple phone, I can do the GPS. So if anyone is expert at that, we can figure out exactly where I was. But I believe in the video, I even say I'm somewhere between six and 7,000. I think I do say it in the video. Yeah, you do. I was cognizant of where I was. Folks, I was high up in my mind. <laughs> but. We're going to play the video now, please. Okay, if you watch to the left and the right of center, you'll see the movement. Look, how do I get the focus on this? You got to move in. I can't believe I heard it all the way in the car. Dude, I'm somewhere between seven and 6,000. It's not that high. Come on, just move again. Move again. I know you're there. I don't know what the hell it was. No, you're there. I'll be damned if I'm going over there. <laughs> yeah. I think now that I've watched it again, I think there's possibly three. Uh, Thomas says, dead center of the trees, there are two figures in the bushes, one crouches down. I think there's one on the left side as well. But I think it's a possibility of as many as three. But again, the detail is not great because it's filmed from a distance with a with cell phone. But I, I'm, I'm tracking motion on both sides. What do you guys think? Roger's eating, so... Well, you know, tacos are best eaten while they're hot. So enjoy. I'm going to be a jerk now. It's a King Taco Burrito. Oh. I'm sorry. My daughter, uh, several of them. Folks, I'm sorry. I've not had anything since. Oh, you're, you're fine. But, uh, folks, this is the first time I actually think I see movement. I told you. And I think now that I I've been watching. Daughter. I think on the right hand side, I think there's two. Well, like like Thomas says, one's crouch one crouches down. I think you had one on the left side and one two on the right. Okay, this is unnerving. What this what is... they are, I can't say, but they don't move like elk or bears or anything like that. They're they're crouching down deliberately. <laughs> so uh, it's crazy. I, I I this is the first time that I actually saw movement. I think you guys saw me flinch in the video. And I turned to my daughter and said, holy crap, there's movement. 
and uh, I was almost expecting uh, Hudson to say, uh, you know, <laughs> 30 meters, closing. <laughs> Sorry. They're all around us. Talk to me, Thomas. Is, Thomas says, lucky you got back in the car is what I think. Uh, Todd Hunter says, I definitely saw motion, but can't tell what it is. Is there a recording of the sound? Did you get the sound on audio? Oh, did I? No. Yeah. No, I did not. Uh, that's why I stopped. I, I'm not going to say I slammed on the brakes, but I, I was doing about 30 to 35, and I slowed down, going downhill, and, and I pulled over to the right. And, folks, Highway 38, if I remember correctly, this is between 9.30 and 10.30 in the morning. Again, the timestamp is on the video. So there's traffic. This is the back yeah. way to the south back way to Big Bear. There's movement. Thomas is crouching his predator move, which is correct. And Josh sent me a still he just captured off his computer screen. If you look, this is from the right side. Um, there's a dark spot almost dead center bottom. And I think that's, I oh, think that's, yeah. Whatever it is, it's behind the trees, but it's, it's good sized. Okay, well, gentlemen, I want to say thank you for that. My heart just stopped. <laughs> uh, we could go back. You know, Todd, thank you, Todd, for that. This is a crazy thing. Okay, but the problem is this was like in November or December, if I remember correctly. I can see snow on the ground. But, Todd, I have the GPS from where I took it on the other side of the road. Todd Hunter says, I think I'd go look for Prince and probably turn into one of the missing 411. Oh, I didn't see the entire post. Thank you, Todd. No, no, no. We don't want to do that. If anything, we would have to go up in the group. Oh, Our Thomas stomach says. Could, <laughs> Our stomach could also be the King Taco. It could also be the King Taco. Why my heart stopped. Josh <laughs> says, just did like, yeah, whatever. Josh says, if I can get the video, Adam, and I can see what we can see. Um, Josh, I'll see if I can get uh, Raj to you, send you the video so you guys can, you know, do a breakdown on it because I would really like to see a little better what's back there. And like I said, now that I've watched, I've watched it probably a dozen times, but this last time I think I saw a third one. Uh, so I think there were definitely three that. of them. If you'd have got out and went over there, you probably would have, the people would have been tagging your car, wondering why there was an abandoned car on the side of the road. Perfectly serviceable Nissan Versa. Who is it that says the, the Versa is a, a Sasquatch attractor or something? Is that Robert Miller? I yeah, it was it Robert. Right. Punk. Yeah, that was Robert. <laughs> Terribly funny, though. Josh says, just take Steve and let him mark the area. <laughs> oh, okay. I can begin by telling you the day. Um, here we go. I have... Let me see. That's the day I cooked dinner. November 14th. Oh, wow. So I believe it was November 15th. Oh, don't laugh. I actually did cook dinner. I put that on my Facebook page. I was damn proud of that. I cooked that meal with the help of my seminary brother. Uh, but uh, I did. You know, it, it was on or about November 14th or 15th. But these are pictures. Uh, Big Bear City. November 15th. Oh, here's one of the videos. Thomas oh, wants you to send him the video out. too. On November 15th at 9.38, I took the first video. So, uh, there it is. I have to find the other videos where they are. You know what? They might not be on this phone. They might be on the other one. That's Thomas, why is, you Thomas is the eagle eye that spotted motion in the, in the video that Steve and I shot uh, when Steve and I hadn't even seen it. Um, so if Thomas sees something, yeah, I, 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 I'll put my money. There's something there, but I, even I think I see something there and it's, yeah, I can't say what it is, uh, but I definitely see motion in three spots and it seems to be doing oh. a, 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 a very, very good job at keeping itself hidden. Okay. I, I was mistaken. It's on my note 10. But okay. I understand you can still get the information. See, there's the video. See, and DA was telling me, says, 
dude, next time film this way. I'm like, oh, hijos de su madre. Ya me está corrigiendo con esta mamada. Me está diciendo esto ahorita. Típico. But okay, anyway, yeah, when I'm frightened, I'm like, oh, I'm about to die. Let me make sure I get the image. Well, just for the next time. Oh, what? Do it like this? Yeah, okay. What do you want me to do? Gmo is actually showing me how to use the uh, controller right now. There you go. So, anyway, the image is there. And I, uh, what are we doing right here? Oh, my goodness. Yes. I don't think November he's got the video 15, uploaded to YouTube or anything, no. Thomas. November 15, 2020 at 9.58 a.m. Wow. Maybe you should. Maybe you should upload the full video to, to your YouTube channel. And then people can look at the un, the un, 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 unedited version before uh, Josh and Adam take a crack at it. If it's an old phone, just use Wi-Fi to send it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a Note 10. It's the one right before the Note 20. So I'm going to go ahead and upload it, folks. I'm gonna it's still make sure better than my right. phone. That's all right. Uh, I, I'm not meaning to be a jerk about it. It's just, it's not very old. I got a Google it's Pixel 2. Watch your language. <laughs> uh, Thomas looks like he's going to join us in a few moments. Okay, I will really send good. him. Uh, I believe Josh did send me a message right now. And uh, I'm going to take a look at that one right now. Oh. I was reading that out loud. Look at the image he sends me, Mika. What a jerk. See that? <laughs> oh, my daughter laughed. Josh, my daughter laughed at the Bigfoot censored image. That's funny. Oh, my goodness. That is funny. Now I'm getting a flashback to a Deadpool game where it does the same thing. It goes tiny, but then he stretches it. <laughs> <laughs> That's very creative. I appreciate that, Chimo. Oh, my goodness, Josh. I, I said, look at what he sends me. And she, you heard her laughing. I believe we're going to bring on Dream right now. There Good he is. Evening. How you doing, young man? With his LED flashlight. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's Let's that. Let's not get into that. I want to talk about this <laughs> video real quick. Okay. All right. So, What did you, you see, look, Eagle Eyes? If you look at that dead center of the trees, there's two feet. One of them, I ordered six uh, in the five. beginning, you see two yet. figures straight away. And then one of them crouches down and gets lower. And like he's like just barely over the edge of the bush. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you could play it again. Yeah, I could play it again. Because I but have you, you, my. We're not, you're you're not going to be able to talk. If I play the video, it's going to mute all our mics. Now, how about if I. Okay, well, I've got to upload it first. Upload what to YouTube? Uh, actually, I'm going to see if I can upload it to one of my folders. And then we can use a share screen. And even though we don't have sound, we'll be able to watch it and we'll be able to speak ourselves. True. So give me a few moments. I don't have the, the un, an altered video, so Roger's going to do that on his end. Yeah, we don't need the audio. The audio doesn't really provide anything other than Rog other telling than, it to move again. <laughs> other than, oh, crap, oh, crap, oh, crap, there it is. <laughs> We get the altitude, and Roger's like, uh, I'm not going over there. Hell no. See, that was as real as I can, can be. I can flip my phone to the side and see this. So that I, I get a bigger picture that way, and I'm right up mm -hmm. on it. Yeah, like I said, I could play it again, but it would, we'd have the audio. We'd lose audio. So okay. Roger's getting it set up where we... Uh, we are. Forgive me a moment. I'll return it. Okay, Roger's fixing the... Hang on. <laughs> wow, how old is that picture? <laughs> Gesundheit. <laughs> Salud. Salute. Bustro. Sorry, I had to, had to mute my mic. Yes, had to mute my mic so I could see. Salam alaykum. Thank you. Ugh. I thought you were going to. I thought you were going to say donkey schlong. Yeah, donkey schlong. <laughs> I, th I I think that's what he's attempting to do, Sergio. I'm not sure. He might be just transferring it to the computer, but I do want to get that up on YouTube. Just much like my my video, so people can look at the video and judge for themselves before they look at the before and after kind of thing. If you screen share, can you pause, scrub, slow down? I don't know if we have the capacity to scrub. <laughs> Got a few uh, more bubble gum for that. Yeah, uh, but um, yeah, I, I, I can know. I can pause it. Ask Roger about the bubble gum chewing. Okay, <laughs> when he comes back. Yeah, that is an old photo. Yeah. We've been doing this since 2008. Well, I'll just tell you. So 
we had a guest come on and literally when we started doing uh all the all the media stuff blog talk radio like it was we were flying by the seat of our pants trying to keep up with everything uh so essentially uh we were just you know trying to find better wires and trying to to get everything held together and one of our guests was like well why don't you just do this and why don't you just do this and do this it was like hold on we got to chew more bubble gum this whole this whole studio is held together with bubble gum and duct tape i know how that feels well that works <laughs> man he looks as old as i am now in that picture Maybe even younger. Who knows? Still wearing Yankee hat, though. True. He's consistent. To a fault. So how have you been lately, man? Working my tail off. I'm you, still at work. I don't think you. I don't think you do much more than close your eyes than go back to work. Yeah, that's about right. Um, I have been here since about six a.m. I am still here. It's about midnight right now, and I am cleaning out uh, part of my uh, my hood vents tonight. So preparing for a grand open, and you know, just regular maintenance. Oh. Well, you know, restaurant. If you if you're not working, you're cleaning. So uh, if, <laughs> you can say that again. If you're not cleaning, you should be. Yeah, you better be. Nothing's ever nothing's ever clean enough. Right. That's how I do it, man. If I wouldn't serve it to my grandma, I wouldn't serve it to people. Exactly. You'll let you'll you'll give your mom some stuff that you might slide a little bit, but you wouldn't give it to grandma. <laughs> <laughs> grandma grab a wooden spoon and knock you senseless. Right. Okay, uh, we've created the folder. Gmo, thank goodness, is here right now. <laughs> She's uh, helping me upload it to our OneDrive folder. And um, it should have worked. And unfortunately, it did not. So she's working on it right now. Okay, good. I think about, we had tech support on standby. I was telling DA about, uh, about the bubble gum in the office. <laughs> Priceless, priceless. People don't know if it was Hubba Bubba or Bubblicious, but it doesn't matter. That's a trade secret. <laughs> Among a few other secrets, yes. Oh, God. Oh, my goodness, yes. Hold the plate. All right. Well, let, let's just look at the video real quick. We'll lose the audio. I just want to see. Yeah, he's still thing. trying to get it transferred over. He was having some technical difficulties. Has tech support got it? Oh, it's uploading now? Yeah, it's taking a while, though. It's taking a while. I thought you had good Wi Fi now. We do. It's a big file. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's what she said. Just keep an eye on it. That's it. His daughter is right there. She can't hear me. Roger has to relay everything. Hey, sweetheart. <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> He gave you the Feliz Award. That's right. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, it's the first time I've been flipped off today. I'm doing something right. Today. Today. Well, yeah, it is just after midnight. So yeah, so it's the first one. Oh, I'm sorry, gentlemen. Yes. Three minutes in. Yeah. Uh, it's it's going to take a little big bit. Points. No problem. We'll so, just, uh, but anyway, we are working on it. I'm going to check my Wi-Fi. I don't know if it's a Wi-Fi issue right now. We'll get back to it. when It, it is a big folder. Uh, I mean, a big file. Go ahead, play with it all you want. No thanks. Oh, what all of a sudden no. You're the no one that usually no. you're you're the one that usually makes the size matters jokes. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you played the fifth on that one, do you? <laughs> sure, why not? Oh my god. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's just a flashback. Well, there's the picture. Do you see anything in that dream? That's the picture okay. Josh sent over. Okay, so it looks like there's a rock next to... next to. All right, so there's the dark tree mm -hmm. in the front. 
on the left. And then the dead center, you see like uh, what looks like a critter next to like that other tree, right? Yeah. And then there's a rock in the front. Mm -hmm. Just above the rock back, mm -hmm. it looks like there's another critter back there with slightly darker or a slightly uh, grayer coat. I see you're uh, using the uh, word critter now that you learned it from Carrie. Oh. <laughs> Picked up the critter vernacular. It's a subspecies of critter. That's right. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? In between, yeah. Like, dead center in between those two small trees. And it looks like that, that one crouches down a little more. If I'm not mistaken, this is what's on the right side of center in the video. This is, this is the spot where I thought I saw two as well. Okay. Um, the download move is moving much faster. It's at about uh, sixty percent. It's okay. so I apologize. It's moving now. Not a problem. And then it's gonna stop at ninety seven, and then go back to twenty five. It's stop gonna stop it. at ninety seven for like thirty minutes. Stop <laughs> it. Well, like Windows updates, it'll fly all the way to ninety nine and set at ninety nine for like half an hour. That's like back in the day when you're trying to log on to AOL. <laughs> it was like in 97, you were like, all right, I'm going to have time. We're to about 80%. <laughs> it's moving fast now. So there was a problem as to which wireless we were on. I do apologize. It's at 90% now. It is moving fast. Well, hey. relatively. Got to stop pirating the neighbor's Wi-Fi, Raj. Just because their password was password one. <laughs> hey, it's not my fault they're that stupid. <laughs> okay, I believe we have the video now. So uh, it's DA, I think. We, okay. I have it here on my screen. I'm now. Oh, there comes another one. Hey, oh, dream. great. Dream. Guess what I'm eating? Beef jerky. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's homemade beef jerky, though. Oh. oh. Oh, okay. So my daughter can actually hear it now. I, I don't know if you could. Actually, I think you guys are going to be able to hear it because the mic will pick it up. So check it out. We're going to go to split screen now, folks. Okay. Bear with us. I'm turning my phone so and, I can get a uh, look at this. Because it's playing on my speakers, so uh, I believe you're going to hear it. So let's see if it does it again. Make it bigger first. I think it's as big I as you can. Hold on, I need about thirty seconds. Hold on, dude. Okay, that might be about as big as yeah. Oh, God. Sorry. Yeah, that's about as big as I can get. Sorry. So the images, I think, were over here, but anyway. Uh, no. Here we go. I think you're going to be able to hear it. We're now at seven seconds in out of 129. Can you hear it? There. Yeah, I can barely hear it. Over there to the right, that definitely moved. As soon as that car went by, it it, it stiffened and then moved. Uh, the one that I'm seeing on the left side is if you go right, almost dead center there, to the left of the tree that's in the center at the moment. Is at the that center the of the one, one, right in there is where I'm seeing the third one, left side of the tree. Is that where you're talking up, about? Right up, there, up, 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 right there. That is the the exact spot I'm seeing movement. Okay, and so for me, it, and on the other side, go to the right. Two trees on the right side of the screen. Oh, never mind. Hold on, I'm oh, sorry. I'm playing with it. Okay, so on the right side, there's. Uh, there's two trees in the front. All right. Oh, holy look moly. At that. Look at that. Okay. So on the right side of the screen, there's two trees in the very front. Dead center of that. I have no idea where your cursor is. There you go. Okay. Right there. All right. That's what DA sees. Right? So that would be it right there. Is that you, DA? That's me. It's not me moving it. 
Okay. Wow. Is that what you see, DA, right there? This is so zoomed in. I think we're, I think what I was seeing is off screen. Okay. Let's play this and see what happens. Now, the movement that we're seeing on this side is right over here on the right side, those two black spots. Okay. Are you talking about that? Right there. Right there. Yeah. That's the right side. The, okay. The right one looks, okay. No, go ahead. The right one looks like it's just checking you out. It's there. Now, above that, uh, you see that that little one that's in – there you go, right there. That's the other thing that I saw that looks like it's like moving – right. there's movement in there. Okay, so I'm going to back up 10 seconds, and we're going to do this I don't know what again. it is, but I definitely saw movement. Okay, check it out. Okay, that's the center of the video, folks. Okay. So that's we're, the center, and there they are over there again. Okay, okay? where I was seeing was to the left of this other tree. Okay. Oh, shit. You can see a big old figure standing up straight. Yeah, the right very, there. The very left. The very, very far left of it. Right, right there. there. That actually left. looks like a figure. Left, left, left. Oh. Left. Keep going left. Uh, I Right, right there. there. That's <gasps> the head. Oh, my. It's a freaking figure standing there. You can see its head. She said, come over here. So maybe the two on the right are like the Cubs. How the yeah. hell do you guys see this? Do you see it now? Do Roger, you do you see, see that face right there? I, I, I'm too far. What, is, what the hell do you see? Hi, Gmo. Do you see that Hi, face right there? No. You want, you want to like turn it back a couple seconds? I, I don't. Oh, well, <clears throat> okay. Okay, right it's there. It's still there. That it's okay. It's a little blurry right now, mm-hmm. but check it out. There it is. Yep. Do you see like two eyes right there? You don't see it. Okay, I'm I know try, you're. I'm you're, trying, you're I'm trying to keep myself sane. I don't want nightmares tonight. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> okay. Anybody? Anybody? Any comments? Because it looks pretty plain to me. Yeah, it's pretty plain. I I think what I was seeing on the right hand side might be like the Cubs. Yeah, like two like, little ones. Like it was trying to like okay. any parent. Get your ass over here. They're now what's you. what's that up there? I don't know. That's pretty high up in the tree. That, that could be. Um, oh, I've read your books, pal. That could be something, but I I don't. Okay. I didn't see any movement in the treetops. I think that's just a dark spot, unless it was holding really still. My iPhone and my iWatch is going crazy on my heartbeat. <clears throat> Giving Roger a heart attack. Josh, are you, are you watching this? I don't see movements. Yeah, okay. Josh snagged an image out of that I got for you whenever you want to see it. My my heart is beating a million miles. Whoa, where do you see this image? Oh. Okay. <laughs> you ready? You put the image up. Sure. F it. Why not? See the shoulders, the head. You can even see like pec muscles in that. Uh huh. Oh. And some what appears to be really large freaking fangs or teeth. Or teeth, yeah. All right. Hey. Well. I don't see movement to the lower right, though. Keep going. Your video's not over yet. Yeah. The movement's pretty subtle. There, it, The front one moved. 
right there. Let me uh, take that image down. Yeah. You can see the head turn a little bit on the right. Yeah. Oh, on the right. Yeah. They don't move a lot. Now it's like, you see the shape is different now, right? Yeah. On the right hand side. Yeah, it's like it's like they're waiting for Roger to leave before they'll move. It's like they're doing this, right? And then they go. Yeah, just like they're peering around they're trying like, to get a better look. Yeah, it, or like they hear they like they hear something calling them or, or Yeah, like like, <laughs> like <laughs> the Bigfoot equivalent Bigfoot equivalent of going, Get your ass over here, I'm gonna beat your little butt. <laughs> yeah. Or just saying like, Don't move, what? The guy in the verse is gonna steal you. <laughs> oh yeah, they feared me. <laughs> okay, here's the video starting one more time. This is four seconds. This is seven. Oh, oh. It's so clear on the left. Yeah, now that I see it. I didn't see it before. We didn't have this close up a look. And again, it... Uh, <laughs> There's something called pareidolia when your mind makes patterns out of what's basically just leaf background and things like that. Because human minds search for patterns. I don't think that's what this is, but it could be a case of pareidolia. I won't say it's not. Um, but I, I'm, I'm convinced I've seen subtle movement to the point where it makes me think it's more than just leaves and, and sticks. And folks, you, you have to understand, I'm there on my own. You can hear the heater. That's the, you know, that ambient sound in the background. Oh, man. That's the heater. And this is not exactly city. I'm up in the mountains. But right. there's a lot of people traveling. But Thank you guys for, for letting me join you for a second. I got to get back and finish this so I can get out of here. All right, man. Thank you. All right. Peace out, guys. Later, Peace. brother. I'm going to finish it off one more time. Okay. Oh, man. I I don't want to play anymore, man. <laughs> I don't know if you didn't pan as far back to the left that time, but it didn't look like it was there anymore that time. Like when you when you moved back to the left. Oh, you hear the video? No. Oh, okay. Um, folks, the reason why I didn't want to go over there is not only because of what I heard, but this was in November. It was a great weekend. I was on my way down. I'm not going to say that I had the feeling of being watched or anything, but I did not want to go over because I had caught movement. I mean, so, it could have just easily been a couple of bears. You know, you, either way, you don't want to walk up on them. And they if it's a mama be, bear with cubs, you'd still be chow. Yeah. Oh man, there went my stomach. Ugh. All right. Well, I'm gonna take this down if that's all right with you, DA. That's fine. But if that if that's a bear, um, that's like no bear I've ever seen. This is terribly unnerving. Yeah, how do you think I felt when they found when they found that, that uh, image in my video that I didn't even know was there? Okay, because the funny thing is, I I was kind of screwing with you on your video by saying, "Hey, that's that author dude that's stealing or giving up our secrets." Yeah, they're over there going, hey, nightmare hunter, come <laughs> here. Let me give you a real nightmare. No, do you know what they were doing? They had their baseball bats. Oh, yeah. Nightmare hunter, <laughs> come out and play, nightmare hunter <laughs> from the Warriors. Your cats aren't here to protect you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. I... I, uh, wow. says, looks like a standing gorilla on the left. 
Yeah, the shape looks very primate. Uh, but it's standing much more erect than gorillas. When gorillas stand on their hind legs, they're still kind of angled forward like they're jutted forward. That one seems much more relaxed in an upright posture. He says, the pick is what I saw too. He says, once I have the video, I can screen cap, compare shapes for movement and enhance. I, I would be very interested. And Josh, I'm not saying, I'm not going to rule out pareidolia. It could just be me seeing movement in the trees because of wind. I don't know, but my... The, the cryptid hunter in me wants wants it to be more, um, but at the same time, I'm I want the evidence to support it. I don't want to just present something and go the Bigfoot. I, I I want I want to rule out what it can't be before I, before we say definitive. Once we once we rule out pareidolia, then that gets much more frightening. Because that's not a bear. I mean, that that's very, very clearly not a black bear. It's way too big. Unless you've got a black bear pushing, I would guess, seven and a half feet tall. I, and I've, I've never seen a black bear that big. Yeah. I mean no likey. I mean, uh, a, a big black bear is five or six hundred pounds. And it's that is six feet tall. Way too on its close hind legs. Mm -hmm. way well, too there you go, Nightmare Hunter. And you didn't have a flash, uh, a flare gun. Uh, yeah, I didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. I knew I've seen I'd seen movement in that video on the left and right sides, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping that once Josh gets the video, it'll bear it out, mm -hmm. uh, because that's 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 pretty awesome footage if you did. If I upload the video to our NDB Media Forum, I wonder if he would be able to download it at that point. Maybe. How big is the file? It's about 200 and some megs. You may have to share it uh, on, the, on the OneDrive. You can share folders with other people that have OneDrives, and Josh has one. Josh has one OneDrive? He has OneDrive, yeah. <laughs> I've got a OneDrive as well. All right, well, obviously, I'm going to go ahead and have to do that. Um, Josh, is just email it. Can you email a 200 meg file? I mean, it's possible, but uh, let me see. You know what? I'm going to try to do uh, Facebook just right now. I don't think it's going to be possible. Facebook will not let you send a file that big. I think it caps it at about 40 meg. <laughs> What's that, three seconds? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because I'm going to be stupid. I'm going to try it real quick. But anyway, I, I, you have to forgive me. I'm stuttering my way through this conversation now. Because I told you guys before, I don't see anything. You do now. I, what brought me to that, of course, was the movement. And the noise. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna he see says he I can send me a share to in OneDrive. Right click the file, should have a share option. Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, so I'm going to create a folder just for this. Bear with me a moment. I actually have one. I'm going to hide it in there. So I'm moving it in there. Uh, yeah, replace the file on that destination. I've told you, Raj. Once you start poking, poking the, poking the, uh, the cryptid, the cryptid experience, once you start down that rabbit hole, the rabbit hole just keeps getting deeper. Stop it. Okay, I'm in the OneDrive. Uh, it says share uh, the folder. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, uh, Josh, can you send me your email? And I'm going to do it to DA as well. Okay. Uh, uh, Josh, send me it via. Facebook. Messenger. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Duh. Okay, so I'm going to be able to do this in a moment. Oh, my goodness. I, my hair, what little I have, is standing on end. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like it one bit. It's 199 megs. Okay, so there it is. 
Josh, your Gmail. I am sending it now, Josh. Oh, link to 2021 sent? Well, no, actually, it should have been 504. Doesn't matter. Just go ahead, Josh. Go ahead and download the video if you would, Josh. But um, what, once you've done so, I ask you to forgive me, Josh. Due to business stuff, I, I have to, you know. I think there's only so much he's going to be able to do uh, from his yeah. phone. He's going to have to do it on his computer. I think he's at work. Okay. Actually, everything that's on there are receipts right now anyway, so it's okay. <laughs> but uh, all right. It's just uh, I do have some confidential stuff related, but there's nothing in there right now. So yeah. it's okay. All right. Well, anyway, I'm so sorry, folks. Uh, I am unnerved. Uh, there are things in that video that I finally saw, and I don't like it. It's not Up like until it. tonight, all I saw was movement. Yeah, you did from day one. I mm -hmm. did. Wow. All right. Well, fair enough. That's not one of my better moments. No, what would have been bad is if you'd like, screw it, I'm going over there. <laughs> that could have been bad. Like, what? wonder why Roger's not answering his text. It's been like six weeks. I'm going to play with my burrito for a moment. <laughs> this might be a good time to remind everybody that we are also live on 99.9. Uh, .9. The, um, what is it again? I'm trying to scroll up and find it. Low key KL, KLKR on 99.9 .9 in Lake Isabella. And thank you guys all for tuning in. Thank you guys all uh, for listening to us tonight. If you haven't, uh, if you're listening to us on YouTube or, if you, or wherever the YouTube channels, NDB Media and the Ozark Haunted Pathways, uh, just go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons for us uh, because those really do help. And make sure you share the video with uh, with everybody you know that you think would like the, the Nightmare Hunter. And then make sure you tune in for D.A. Roberts, D.A. X. Mocking on, on, uh, on Saturday nights. Josh said he is downloading the video now. So he'll get a good, nice, good look at it. And I feel my heart. What's your wow. Fitbit say? Oh, it's an Apple Watch. I'm sorry. Oh, yes, this is an Apple Watch. Now do I know Calman Fitbit? <coughs> what me. is this Fitbit you speak of? Peasant. Okay, right now it's only 85. But a few moments ago, oh, there it goes. I'm 88. It was at 123. Wow. <laughs> you were sweating bullets. And my daughter's like, <laughs> she was a little smile, a little smiley right now. Willie Johnson. Oh, thank you. LOL. Willie, uh, thank you for the like. We're up to 11, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And remember, if we get up to 30, we will be giving a $5 Amazon card out. Woo. Yeah, um, I'm in 94, man. It keeps going up. I don't know if you can see it. It's 94. Keep, keep thinking about it. Amazon has uh, has done some things. <laughs> oh, she says, excuse me, Samsung, Samsung rep in the room. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, my goodness. But it's, uh, okay, it's back down to 82 now. But my phone says it was 94 just a moment ago. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Amazon has changed some of the way they're doing things, uh, which is going to directly affect, well, me and a lot, and, and thousands of other, other authors like me. Um, they used to do this thing, this banner on the bottom of all the screens. So if you were looking at one of my books or if you even looked at somebody who was similar, it would said people who pur purchased this also purchased these. And I got a lot of sales driven by those clicks. People would see somebody that bought Monster Hunter Inter International by Larry Correa would say also bought Team Odin, you know, uh, Code Name Wild Hunt by D.A. Roberts. I got a lot of traffic that way. Amazon has taken that away. Um, and they've gotten rid of it. 
and now it's a it's a pay to play service. Only the authors that pay the most get their books put on there. Oh. Uh, and a small time guy like me, I can't afford to pay the big bulky. Tri- it's actually now a trillion dollar operation. I can't pay them, even though they're taking thirty percent off the top of every uh, of every electronic sale. Uh, now they do absolutely nothing other than host the file. Uh, they're not promoting the books in any way, shape, or form. They don't send out emails saying when new books are released. The only way people are finding out that I have a new book out is because I'm going out and, you know, big word of mouth campaign. Since Amazon's doing that, I'm considering pulling my books from the KDP Select. That would, they would still be available on Amazon, but they wouldn't be part of the. Um, uh, Kindle lending, online lending library, and not like that. They, they they would have to be purchased to be read instead of being for people that had had a uh, what is that? Uh, Kindle Unlimited, um, where they can go in and read for free. It wouldn't be enrolled in that anymore. And that well, reason I do would would do that is that would allow me to break my my um, my contract my, my contract with Amazon for mu- for uh, for giving them sole rights to the books. Um, I agreed to that to have access to the Kindle online lending library, the KU. Um, if I do that, I can put all of my books also on Smashwords, which markets me into about 40 more categories, including Barnes and Noble, Walmart, um, Kobo, Books a Million, Book U. There's, there's a bunch of places that the, the books would go that they have never been before. Um, the problem with that is it is it going to be a hell of a lot of work. Uh, because I can't take the manuscript as I have it formatted for Amazon and upload it to Smashwords because it's a different format. I have to learn how to format Smashwords style and then start from scratch. I've got to have the covers re- redone because they're going to have to meet a different criteria. I'm going to have to change all the formatting and re-upload. Um, and it it it's going to be a huge undertaking. But if I don't, I'm going to see my sales drop in the toilet probably in the next six months. And that's just because Amazon did it and they can and we can't do anything about it. So I'm, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big decision I'm going to have to make. Do I want to stay in the Kindle Unlimited, which I do get quite a bit of, uh, we'll get a bit of traffic. But any author that's involved in the Kindle Unlimited will tell you we only make pennies compared to what we would if somebody bought the book. Um, if somebody buys the book and they read it, we get paid per page they read. Um, if they read the entire book, we make it's about half of what we would make if they if they bought if they bought the book. Well, um, wait a minute. What? How does that work again? It's 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 the agreement you get into with the Kindle and the Kindle Unlimited for the unlimited because right. If, so if, because they they're technically paying a fee to read every month, and they can read read everything that's in the Kindle Unlimited library for free. Um, and I get paid per page read, but the, here's the thing. Once they have it in their library, if they read the book 10 times, I don't get paid per page 10 times. I get paid the one time and done. Uh, so being in Kindle unlimited, I'm, I'm, I'm really hamstringing it to about half royalties. Um, and Amazon well, the, the reason we did that is because Amazon was providing a certain level of advertising, which they are no longer doing. So that's my dilemma, whether or not to remain with the Kindle Online Lending Library, the KU, Kindle Unlimited. Um, because if I, if I don't sign up that, with that, while I'm enrolled in that program, I, I have to be exclusive to Amazon. Uh, but if I leave that program, it allows me to go into a lot of other markets that I'm not currently in. It's just going to be a tremendous amount of work. And if anybody out there knows how to format a Smashwords a, a Smashwords document. Um, send me a message. I wouldn't mind a tutorial. I've downloaded the guide on it. I haven't even started reading it yet. Uh, but it is a it is a massive task for 22, 22 manuscripts, 23 manuscripts, I think. Let me count short stories. Uh, and basically starting, it would be like starting from scratch. But having said that, it would get me into a lot of markets. I'll uh, go to the website and uh, read them off. The more the merrier. I agree. It's just whether or not it's going to be 
how much work. I mean, it would get me in Apple Books, Smashwords, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Scribd, Tolino, Overdrive, Cloud Library, Odilo, Gardeners, Askews & Holtz, Brown Books for Students, Hive Co. UK, uh, Khalifa, uh, Baker & Taylor, Access 360, Blio, Livaria Cultura, FMAC. Uh, it's... And actually, on if it, they purchased off the Smashwords store, I would get a higher percentage of royalties than I get through Amazon. Uh, but if it's purchased off of like Apple Books, I would get a little less than what I'm currently getting. But it, I, I think it would more than make up for the KUKOLs. I just I don't know. It's a, it's a big decision, and it's gonna whatever I do, it's initially gonna bite me in the ass until it catches back on. If I switch over to having it on Amazon and all of these others, it's going to take a while for the marketing to kick in, and then it'll take even longer for the, the actual royalties to start coming in. So I'll lose I'll lose for at least three to six months, but Pat, I'm going uh, to regardless. Pam has a comment, uh, and I believe she's referring to the formatting. Mm-hmm. I, I have asked around a little bit. In fact, it's another author that or even I reason I know they did this. I, I noticed that Amazon, every time I'd go to something, I'd noticed that that banner was gone, but I thought maybe it was just on my account. Um, but it's, it's, it's every indie author out there has now lost that. Um, and it, it drove a lot of sales. I mean, a lot of us got sales and you can still get that if you want to pay three to $500 a month, which I can't, I mean, I, I'm scraping by now. Well, we'll see. I'm looking forward to that convention in July of next year. And we're going to have to see how big it can be realistically. That would uh, be awesome. Well, DA, it's going to happen. It's it will, just it, it, how it, big it's going to be yeah. is going to be the question. Yeah, that's the question. That's the million dollar question. I think it can be done relatively easily. And. Uh, We'll just see how we're going to do it. And it's just, it's, it, it'll work. And uh, we have to plan on what we're going to do. If it's going to be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, or just Saturday and Sunday, or just Saturday. Who knows? Hey, DA, I was thinking of this. Forgive me, folks. We're having a staff meeting now, dare I say. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that when I say staff meeting, it means God, DA, and me submitting the prayer. So well, knowing that, DA, why don't we try doing this? In your books, did you, Ragnarok Committee Unite, yes. I, I came up with an idea of how about we do this? Steve, who's your co-host, is a character in your book, right? Mm -hmm. How many scenes is he in? Uh, usually the closing scenes at the end of uh, the Wild Hunt books. Okay. Why don't you write a scene for Steve and whoever else, and we do them as promos for your books? Uh, what, film them as promos? We can do it via this, where they're having a conversation or whatever. We can film a little 30-second whatever but you can have the characters and you never know. You never know, man. I would be open to it. I like the idea if maybe it's just a scene in the book where we are reading our lines in the book and maybe we're not in the video, our faces, mm -hmm. but maybe there's like the Ozarks, a view of the Ozarks. And maybe I'm speaking saying, yep, I should have known. I'm afraid of heights, but yeah, like an idiot, I still went up into those mountains or whatever. You could write something and then we could do a voiceover on something related to the events, past events, or maybe you can start doing something like you did in that standalone novel of that short story. Yeah. And you can just start doing some crazy stuff, DA which could maybe be a hint of stuff that will come or whatever. 
and uh, we can start doing it now. Who knows? Uh, Raj. Uh-oh. Oh, good God. Josh just sent me a picture. I, I think you're going to like. Just, oh. Okay, give me a second to upload it. Okay, um, so, so Josh did upload it, correct? Yeah, Josh just uploaded it. I've just, okay. just got it uploaded here. All right, uh, Josh, I do apologize, but I am going to pull the authority only because it's under the business account. And I, under IRS, federal rules and stuff, I have to limit. Because if you actually have access, further access, every time a client enters my office, I have to list everyone associated with that return or business or whatever. It's a hassle. So I have to pull the authority. I apologize, Josh. Well, he's got the file he needed, so. Yeah. So well, anyway. look at this. Uh, it's under the tree. I don't. I don't know what it is, but it's definitely hell. It even looks like it might be more than one. Josh, you're the one that that cleaned it up. What do you think? When it's you see under the tree. Well, I guess I have to take a look as to the dark spot right in the middle left. Um, I'll see if I can pull the video again. Dark spot, right, middle, left. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the video. I'm starting her up again. He says, I see tree shadows. Oh, he sees tree shadows? Yeah. I can't, I can't really tell. Um, now is that the stuff on the right? I don't know. I don't have enough of a sampling of this to tell you. Because the one that I'm most concerned about is the one where it's uh, it's the one on the left. This is the one where you guys all said you saw a standing large figure. Oh, a standing large figure. Oh, the one on the left. That... Right. It's that. Apparently cleaned up. Oh, really? Yeah, he says he sees tree shadows. But he may be right. I mean, like I said, there's a, you know, I, I, I said it from the, from the get there. That it could have just been pareidolia. Our, our brains are seeing shapes where the where none exist, uh, because the human brain's kind of wired that way. And, and if it's nothing there, I mean, I, I would rather know that it's nothing than present it as something and it not be anything. So, thank you, Josh. So it may just be shadows. And what what I saw as movement very well just could have been. The, the wind blowing the trees, moving the leaves, giving the the uh, the uh, appearance of movement. So there we go. Aww. He says, with, with a little enhancement, it looks less like a figure and more like a shadow. But I'm going to analyze it for movement when I get on my computer. Also, I thought I saw the dog man was a shadow. So we'll see what further analyzation can deliver. Okay. Yeah, he also thought that what turned out to be the dog man was just a shadow. And when we had Nick Valente from the North American Dog Man Project on there, he was like, that's a type 3 dog man. Holy crap. Speaking of Nick Valente, he is going to be on uh, DAX Machina this weekend. I need to update my announcement. Oh, my camera's acting up again. Lovely. There you're back. Uh, yeah, I can restart it because it's not getting unplugged. It just thinks it is. So now that it did it, it'll probably do it again shortly. It's my apologies, folks. I it's either a short in the USB port or the USB port or the camera's fixing to die. It was not an expensive camera to begin with, but uh, if it goes out, I may have to borrow one from my son because it may be a bit before I can afford to replace it. Well, 
just yeah. Now I do see movement on both the left and the right, and when the center, so I can actually slow things down and see if there's actually movement frame by frame. Oh, oh man! I actually was a tad disappointed when he said it was like. Trees and stuff. Well, it may not be. I mean, you know, we don't know. But Roger, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Josh thinks that uh, that it may just be shadows. Which oh, Josh became Roger for a moment. <laughs> sorry, Josh. Sorry that you had to deal with that. Sorry, pal. Wow. So much for the cryptids of Central Asia. <laughs> yeah, we kind of got sidetracked. I did upload a bunch of cryptid stuff. So what a shock, though! What you've a got shock. you've got pictures of crypt for cryptid stuff. I got uh, three three images for the uh, the uh, uh, Kandahar giant. I've got some dogman images, and I've got a bunch of just like cryptid stuff that I found. Wow, this is crazy. Well, it looks like quite a few people did appreciate my little uh, picture of my cup today. <laughs> it was not a good day at work, let's put it that way. I took the cup in as a joke, and a lot of people are loving that cup, man. Well, uh, here's, here's you a cryptid from Central Asia. The Mongolian death worm? Mm -hmm. It's an alleged creature reported to exist in the Gobi Desert. Ah, Dune, anyone? It is generally considered a cryptid. It is described as a bright red worm with a wide body that is two to five feet long. Oh. Legend says the worm can spew an acid that, on contact, will turn anything it touches yellow and corroded. The acid can instantly kill a human. In addition, it can attack at a distance by shooting an electric discharge. Now, are we watching aliens? <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Wow. According to the legend, some of those were supposed to have been put in place to guard the tomb of Genghis Khan. Really? Mm hmm. Wow. Well, here's your, here's your good size comparison, Raj. Okay, what are we playing with? Oh, Look is at, that the Versa over on the left? Yeah, that's the Versa on the left and you. And that's an elk, a bison, a moose, a normal deer, a black bear, and a North American Sasquatch. And these are different types of dogman that have been reported. Vitruvian, Vitruvian dog man. That, that's a great image. Different types of Sasquatch type creatures. Oh wow! The Yeti. Mm -hmm. And there's breakdown by state. The most famous mythical creature in every U.S. state. Welcome to California, the home of the aliens. <laughs> I don't know how much of that is. Political more than encrypted. <laughs> ah, stupid. Oh, my goodness. Because I thought that Arizona, or I apologize, I mean, Nevada would be more home to aliens than California. Hey, uh, Raj. Sir, yes, sir. Don't uh, don't get your uh, don't get too disappointed yet. Uh, Josh just Josh. sent me this. He said he's pretty sure he sees eyes in this one. I'm not sure where. I think right there in the middle, but I don't know what he's what he's pointing out. But he said he thinks he sees eyes in this one. Um, Josh, let us know when you're. Yeah, once he's on his computer and he can do the enhancements and actually circle what we're supposed to be looking at. Oh, is he driving right now? Yeah, he's at work. <laughs> he's doing this on his phone. Sorry, Josh. 
sorry to have led you down the path of uh, temptation. I don't think it was much of a much of a trip. That's funny. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, we're an hour and fifty minutes in on this last minute, last second planned episode here of the Nightmare Hunter. Of course, he's DA. I'm Royer, and that's Gmo right over there. Josh says, so if you look at the dark figure right in the center, it looks like it has two ears on top right below. (laughs) That looks like there might be two eyes. Yes. Uh, Yeah. I clearly see it right there. Mm -hmm. So that's That's crazy. I don't see that, DA, in the other images, but obviously right there you do. Wow. What little hair I have is standing on it. What's the heart rate like? Nine minutes ago, it was 81. Let me see where it is right now. It should be giving me a current reading right now. Oh, man, this is crazy. Okay, it's only 81 right now, but I do feel it in my chest. Oh, man. Oh, something just stepped on my grave. Have you? Are you familiar with that? Where you're somewhere, someone, or, or something, and all of a sudden you, you have that shiver mm-hmm. that you overcome. Do you know in the Latin world, and it, it's there's other beliefs, but in your world, I'm sorry, this came across as totally insensitive. What does that mean, DA, when all of a sudden you shiver or something? Um, old wives' tale says somebody stepped on your grave. Yes, that's what it is in the Latin world as well. So las viejas... También en el mundo latino. <laughs> or uh, to quote Doc, Holly, uh, Doc, Holly, uh, Doc Holliday, why, Johnny Ringo, you look like someone just walked over your grave. Oh, that's right, right. So anyway, folks, we in the Latin world believe that whenever you get a shiver like that, someone walked over your grave. Well, I never forgot, but this one day, I don't know what it was, I was at work, and man, I was shivering all day. I'm like, what the hell is construction going on? <laughs> They're on my... My Somebody's dancing on like, it. He's like, what's going on? I was shivering all day. Some Irish guy river dancing on your grave. Oh, my goodness. And some of my coworkers laughed at that one. Like, what the hell's going on? Is there construction? Are they readying the grave? <laughs> Don't. Ugh. You never know. You never know that, lad. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Uh, this was good. I do want to thank definitely DA on this one because he had asked me earlier, but I just wasn't up to it. I was having trouble. The headaches, folks, they have not gone away. I, um, the problem is that they're usually in the morning when I wake up and they'll go for about two, three hours, but I had to go to work this morning because I did not make it yesterday. So I did drive in and, uh, and I was able to get to work barely. There were several accidents along the way. And I made it about 20 minutes before my start time, which is at 6 a.m. So the headaches didn't stop until maybe around 8, 30, 9 o'clock. So I was able to get stuff done. But then around 1, I think it was around 1.15, because I kept saying to myself, damn it, 45 minutes for break time. At 1.15, it started to become unbearable. But as opposed to others, I could actually localize where it was. And it was like right in this area, and I could just feel it. And it's just, ugh. Don't have an aneurysm there, Raj. No, hopefully not. And what it is is when I have the headache, you know, I get lightheaded and I get nauseated, and then I get the urge to, you know, have it, whatever I had earlier that morning, I'll come back up real quick. Express elevator. Express elevator to expulsion. <laughs> And unfortunately, people know when I'm not feeling well because I, you know, it's like, oh, boy. (laughs) And I did, unfortunately, throw up at work on Thursday several times, whereas my supervisor came to see me at 8 o'clock. He says, what the hell? Go home. (laughs) I'm like, dude, sir, I have stuff to do. I can't leave my compatriots. So I was in for a few hours on Thursday, but I did go home eventually, but... It was payroll deadline, a lot of other stuff. So uh, I just, you know, I, I I have to do what I have to do. I cannot throw my work on someone else. It's not right. Besides, it won't get done. I've already learned my lesson. 
Oh, it angered me. I actually shared this with DA. I know I'm way off topic, but I've been in my current assignment for about eight years. I've covered, I cover, and I will cover for everyone. And last year, remember DA when I got sick in July Mm -hmm. and I had that infection? I genuinely missed like the entire month of July. I returned to work and no one did a thing when I was out. Funny the things you learn. I I was I'm not gonna say I was heartbroken because I'm an adult, but my staff was so oh I'm sorry I didn't mean to say that. My coworkers were so happy I was there and they and I they needed my assistance. But it did anger me that I'm like, I've covered for everyone else. And the one time that I was really out, no one covered for me. Oh, I was bitter. I was a bitter puppy for a while, DA. <laughs> I totally get it. Ugh. But my job is not life and death. So far be it for me to actually complain about that stuff. But I was still, I was been out of shape. But I'm sorry, folks. I'm complaining. That's a third. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's a first world problem, right, DA? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, it is a first world problem. And that's becoming my phrase right now on some stuff that we're working on. I forget what it was, and I said, that's a first world problem. And uh, no one else will understand. So we'll leave it at that. Everyone here listening, I'm sure. But Anyway, I'm all over the place. DA did upload some images. I did want to, unless you have anything else you want to get, DA, we're on your time, man. It's already almost 1 a.m. where you are. Oh, we can we can go a little bit longer. We can wrap up whatever you're. What are you ever game for? You're the one that has to work in the morning. In the net. Sure. <laughs> the uh, link which I did post. We'll go ahead and finish this one up. This is okay. a Russian one. I did post it earlier, and it is the Abnaayu, and it's the Russian analog of the Bigfoot Sasquatch commonly linked to the Almas, said to roam the lands around the Caucasus mountain region. Like other potential relic hominid habitats, and I apologize, if you guys want to click on that link to follow, you can see some images of it. But the range of the Alma, which I believe DA, and I know he'll correct me, is generally what they refer to as the Bigfoot Mm -hmm. in Central Asia, right? Yeah. I understand that the area of the Alma is from the central Siberian plateau south to Mongolia and maybe Mount Pektu in the North Korea, uh, Chinese part, and as far as the Caspian Sea, Mm -hmm. which is crazy, which would be in the, not the Alps, I forget which ones they are. Oh my, the Himalayas. Yeah. Himalayas. So they're generally in the Himalayas all the way through Mongolia, well into parts of. There are a lot of names for it in, in that type of creature in, in Asia. Yeti, the Yeren, the Alma, the Almasti. There, there's a bunch. And then the Sana, ones you read off of. Sanya. Yeah. Yes. They say they captured one in the 1980s. Well, here recently. Oh, in the 1890s. I apologize. Go ahead. Here here recently, there was a Bigfoot conference. I think this was just last week where a Russian scientist made the claim that he had a a Bigfoot creature that he could communicate with in Russia and called, made a phone call on the, uh, during the, the Bigfoot conference and supposedly had a conversation on the phone with Bigfoot. And uh, honestly, I think it's bullshit. Um, but I think it was done for theatrics, uh, in which it, this is, that's the exact kind of thing that really makes, makes us all look bad, makes everybody look like an idiot. Like we're just all out there, a bunch of goobers running around in the woods. Um, oh. Yeah. It's to get up there and in front of these people that have spent years going out in the woods and trying to get, get, get something more than just a grainy photo to have this jackass set up there on the stage and say, Oh, I've got one on speed dial. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm having a. Yeah, okay. Josh says, if true, why wasn't it a video call? Yeah, he um, supposedly did it at the last minute, and yeah, he didn't have time to set up the video, and there's a lot of excuses flying. I will see if I can find the article again. Um, yeah, that's that's stupid. That's sad. I know for the future, folks, as we're going to be ending relatively soon on this episode, uh, we're going to be – Asia is so huge that we're going to be there for a little bit, I think. And then we're going to be moving. Cause I didn't realize Japan has cryptids as well, mm -hmm. yeah. as does Korea. So I wonder how it works in North Korea if they think that the cryptids are a Western invention. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the United Americans. States, yes, <laughs> the United States does this to us. Oh, my goodness. It definitely could be the Americans, but uh, <laughs> who knows? Uh, but there are quite a few. I'm going to list another article in the chat room. A uh, great comment, Josh. And it is from exemplar.com. And it lists the eight mysterious monsters of Asia. Sushinoko, Yeren, which is wild man, Kalabandar, which is the black monkey, somewhere in the streets of New Delhi. Uh, Hibagan, it's uh, known as the Japanese Bigfoot, but lives in the forests of Mount Hiba in northern Hiroshima. Wow. Then you have Lake Tianchi Monster, uh, which straddles the border between tw uh, China, China, sorry, China, North Korea. And I believe that's near the Mount Pektu, the one I was talking about. But they talk about the volcanic activity, whatever, but that's okay. Then you have Isi, uh, is a lake cryptid that lives in the depths of Lake Ikeda in Japan. Go figure. <laughs> and then you have Orani Bati, uh, is found on the island of Saram in Indonesia. This cryptid is basically a cross between a flying monkey and a bat. And it's said to raid villages. And finally, Kappa, which is a Japanese water creature known for having long, incredibly elastic arms. It is described as being green in color with scaly skin and webbed feet. Yet it is still somehow, yet it still somehow resembles a humanoid. Check it out. Those are good links. Lots of good information. And there is more that we will be talking about as we move forward. But again, Think about what we're doing on every episode of The Nightmare Hunter. We are covering regions. We try to get into depth and detail, but there are so many that we could be on air for the next 30 years, and we will never be able to oh, cover definitely. each and every cryptid there is. So we're going to try to do our best. We're still going to sprinkle in guests. I was telling DA that I'm contemplating maybe doing a Nightmare Hunter every week. I don't know. That might kill the Golden Goose, though. But uh, I don't know. We'll see or some form of it. Because I don't want to take away from DAX Machina as well. I don't think you will because I talk more about books on DAX that, Machina. We do, discuss, we do discuss cryptids, but we talk more just about horror in general. Uh, you know, we're not really, DAX Machina is not really a, a cryptid specific show. We, we talk about anything in horror. And the Nightmare Hunter surprisingly is. We talk about cryptids and where they are, what they are, and we try to get to the history of them. And uh, yeah, you're right. That's kind of cool. But all right, fair enough. Look, I do want to thank everyone. DA, I know it's 1 o'clock in the morning. Thank you for accepting this last minute one. Josh, of course, everyone else in the chat room that joined us. I'm going to mention you by name. Of course, it was Willie Johnson, Pam Roberts, Sergio Lomelli, Thomas Whitney, Todd Hunter. I apologize. There's a few more up here. Uh, Carlos Valen. And I believe that might be it. And then everyone else gave us a like. Loki, KLKR. And uh, yes, and of course, the likes. We love you all. We appreciate it all. 
Willie Johnson, Pam Roberts, Thomas Whitney, Cindy, John Pierre, Todd Hunter, Tyler Marshall, All Tower Media, Low Key, KLKR, Josh Jones, Carlos Vallon, and Jacob Hayes. And of course, to the effervescent, effervescent co-host, D.A. Roberts. It's good. I enjoyed this one again. Thank you, sir. This one was pretty serious when we know we, we sometimes we get a little goofy, but this one was primarily just us talking cryptids. And then we got on the subject of your video and I'm looking forward to seeing what, what Josh, Josh and Adam find when they dig into that. Yeah. We'll see. All right. Fair enough. Uh, any last thoughts, DA, which those might've been them right there. Good, more or less. Um, just want to thank everybody for being here. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, and if you're interested in finding some of my books on cryptids, which are fiction, they're, they're fiction stories uh, with the cryptids featured as monsters. Uh, and then I also have a zombie series called The Ragnarok Rising Saga. But if you'd like to check out any of my work, you can check it at daroberts.net uh, or on amazon.com under DA Roberts. And there it is ntbmedia.net, folks. Website's going to get an update. We expect to be able to put the YouTube viewers directly on the page so you don't have to hunt and fish for all the different stuff. So we're looking forward to doing that. And besides that, my love and respect to everyone who comes to spend time with us, admiration and gratitude. Absolutely. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you guys for being part of this. The end is only the beginning. Folks, good hunting. And be safe.